The following podcast contains spoilers for Remember and 20th Century Women. You have been warned. Welcome back, everybody, to Cat News Radio. This is your host, Glenjamin Button, along with your host, Miguel Mingusto. <laughs> uh, that along was pretty extra. Yeah, it was super extra. It was super extra. But <laughs> what I did was I was like two feet away from the mic, and I went in as long as I was saying along. I was like, along. <laughs> How you doing, Glenjamin? I'm all right. Not bad. Not terrible. Not great. What? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it went so much faster than I expected it to. <laughs> Every hey, context, it's all around. I got a question for you. Got an answer. Who plays, oh God, who plays Private Ryan in the movie of the same name? First of all, it's not the same name. It's the same name. It's Saving Private Ryan, oh, shit, but whatever. There's technically two Private Ryan, Ryans in that movie. Yeah, I think they're talking about the main one. Oh, uh, it's Matt Damon. It's Matt Damon. Smat. Good old Smatthew. Smat. <laughs> uh, because they went to the one first and it was the wrong one, right? Yes, I believe so. Boom. Yes. A little trivia there for yeah, you people. Yeah, little, little, little trivia. Trick I haven't question. seen that movie in a while. Yeah, it's still good. Hey, speaking of movies, uh, are you seeing any movies in the past week that you want to talk about at all? I haven't seen Jack. Jack? I'm um, um, Actually, I did not see that Robin Williams movie today, but I am going to see uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood today, I think. Ooh. Ooh, you gotta let me know what you think. I I, I want to see it again today if I can. Yeah, I got um, a buddy who asked if uh, he should go see Lion King, Aladdin, or that movie, and I was like, first off, stay away from the Disney's. Don't give yeah. them the money. Yeah, really. Go see the Tarantino. Yeah, well, uh, I I just recently signed up for the Regal Unlimited plan, so mm. I can see all the movies, all of them. You know what makes and, me laugh very hmm. hard? What's They're that? making an employee version. Oh. And and employees have to pay for that. Yeah, this is, that's employees dumb. have to pay for something they should already have, and that's insane. That's to so me. dumb. When we started, when I started, it was unlimited movies, and there was unlimited yep. movies when you started for employees. Because guess what? They don't get health. Mm-hmm. They don't get anything at no PTO or anything unless they're full time. Yep. So their only benefit was literally a discounted concession and free movies. The free movies do not cost Regal anything. So I don't understand why they just, they turned it to, to two tickets a week and now they're making people pay. I hope yeah, it's extremely making, discounted. Yeah, I don't know what it is yet. They're still making it, but they are making an unlimited plan for employees that they can see pretty much whatever they want and discounted food, but they have to pay for shit they should already have. Yeah, employees. that's really that's dumb. insane to me. Goddamn British people. British people bought them out and <laughs> ruined that company. But uh, yeah, I, I like it as a, I like them as a customer. But they're doing shit to my friends that that yeah. still work there. So anyway, so you saw Jack shit. I saw uh, a shit named Stuber. Uh, it, it wasn't shit. It was okay. Um, I did want to see that, but it, never got around to it. Yeah, it's fine. It's not. Uh, extremely hilarious but uh you know Kumail Nanjiani and Dave Bautista have a good uh back and forth Mm -hmm. Uh, Dave Bautista uh in the movie for most of the movie is supposed to be like partially legally blind because he uh he he got LASIK that same day Oh, really? Yeah, and he actually does a like lot in of... in the movie or just... In the movie, yeah. Oh, okay, I was yeah. about to in, say. In the, his character gets LASIK and then finds out about this, uh, like a, he gets a lead on a mission or, that, or a, uh, a case he's been working on for years. Um, and uh, he does a lot of really small, nuanced stuff for him being blind uh, yeah. or not being able to see. Like he's squinting essentially the entire time until his sight eventually does come back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it's he he's he does a lot of really good small work in it. I was really impressed. Uh, you know, he's a better actor than I think people give him he's, credit. He's definitely getting up there uh, since his WWE days. Yeah, um, yeah. And being in any WWE movie, just uh, like Riddick and stuff like that. Like he's definitely getting better work, which is why he's getting better at 
acting. And yeah, awesome. definitely. And he refuses to do the Fast and Furious movie, so good yeah. for him. <laughs> There's a lot of people upset about that. He's like, I refuse to do a bad there, movie, but they're I, taking I, it out of context a If you, bit. and yeah, I mean, like, someone brought up Escape Plan 3 or uh, 2, whichever mm-hmm. one he's in. The first Escape Plan's great. Yeah. So, like, if you hear that you're, they're doing a second one and they want you to be in it, yeah, I, I would do it too. What he is saying is that he doesn't want to do movies that he doesn't like, which is about, what, eight or nine movies now of the Fast and Furious franchise? Yeah. He doesn't want to be in movies that, like, they know they're going to be bad. Like, he, yeah. if he's going into a movie, like... He wants it to he attempt at least to be good. There's a hope that it's going to be good. Yeah, because the entire Fast and Furious franchise are just movies so bad that they're good at this point well are you, I, I, are you I don't like see them. hobson show no i um, i might wait till it's on dvd i, I With, was debating it i'm like oh, this might yeah. be the one fast and furious type movie i actually do want to see with the with the regal thing and it looks so ridiculous that i might but with the yeah. regal thing you know uh it's i'm back to the point where like because i don't have to pay anything i might go see it i just like jason statham man yeah i like jay i do like the rock too and uh there's a few other actors. Id- Idris Alba is in. Vanessa is great. Um, so I, I might see it, but I'm not. I'm not rushing to see it. I have a few others yeah. that I'd rather see. But yeah, Stuber is. Uh, you know, it's pretty good overall. Um, it's Notice probably how gonna, far we went off the topic of Dave Batista. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably extremely forgettable. Like I probably won't remember too much of it. But it, yeah. it, it was an entertaining, entertaining enough film. So I guess we should just get into it. Let, well. Let's start with. Remember. You are the only person who could still recognize the man who murdered our families. Do you remember what you said you would do when Ruth died? I have planned everything for you. You must follow these steps precisely. His name is Otto Wallisch. You must find him. You must kill him. I'm looking for my father. Hey, sir, you're gonna have to check your bag. I've already called the police. Passport? We are the last living survivors. Stand by the window. Who are you? Please, don't you? This is Nazi. Nazi. Bad person. Written by Benjamin August and directed by Adam Agoyan. Uh, starring Christopher Plummer, Kim Roberts, Amanda Smith, and Martin Landau. Remember is about a man with the aid of a fellow Auschwitz survivor and a handwritten letter. An elderly man with dementia goes in search of a person he believes to be responsible for the death of his family in the death camp to kill him himself. That was a run on there. Mm, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, a man uh, to uh, simple, uh, you know, simplify, that. simplify that. Yeah. It's a, about a, man, just your words. <laughs> a man with dementia who is an Auschwitz survivor, or so we're told, and uh, he <clears throat> with he's given a letter and is told to kill a Nazi per, guard at he's Auschwitz. Back, he's basically on a Nazi war hunt. Yeah, yeah. His <laughs> 70 years died. later. He's got nothing else to live for, so he's kind of just like, hey, I might as well go kill this other old guy that lived free in america even though he was a nazi yeah um so yeah this movie was first of all i didn't know it was a24 uh so we got a double dose of a24 mm-hmm. movies today um and it was okay you know i i didn't love it i didn't hate it um <laughs> the uh the first half hour i thought i was watching an old person's memento <laughs> Essentially, that's essentially what it is. I mean, yeah. other than it being, it's not, it's not told from the end to the beginning like Memento. Yeah, he keeps waking up and forgetting what he is doing. So then he rereads this letter, uh, kind of like how um, in Memento he reads tattoos. Um, but yeah, it's 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 okay. I, I didn't love it. 
Nah, yeah, it's it's a solid okay. There's Christopher Plummer. He's great in it. Very yeah, forgetful old man all the time. You yeah, feel for him. His fucking his family died in the the Holocaust mm-hmm. um, in Auschwitz. So he's going out for some revenge. He's killing some people seven years later. Talk yeah. about holding on to a grudge. Definitely. Uh, I mean, yeah, you should hold on to that grudge, but still, mm-hmm. that's a very big grudge. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I thought it was good. Um, I'll admit I wasn't paying attention most of the movie. Uh, yeah. But, like, it's a good movie to just put on. Uh, watch. Performances were great. I really liked, um, shit, what's the dude from Breaking Bad? He is Dean Norris. There he is. Yeah, Dean Norris. Yeah, I liked him. It was a very, I didn't see that twist coming, him freaking out like that. Well, I guess I kind of saw it coming. He was talking about his dad a lot. And yeah, how much he, yeah. I, I, the the fact that he was he thought those things were sentimental and not embarrassing and shameful yeah. showed me that the, I was he, he flipped one eighty real hard. Like it was yeah. one thing to talk about it, and then he was like, <gasps> "You Jew," he yeah, just went evil. Yeah, I kind of wish that it was, you know, I kind of wish it, for his character it was more of a his a twist where like you know his father was an american soldier or something and he just having the nazi memorabilia um reminded him of you know fighting for his country and all that Mm -hmm. uh i knew that wasn't the case as soon as i saw the nazi flag hanging above the mirror yeah because American soldiers who did collect Nazi flags don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, of course, started talking about uh, him being German and being at Crystal Knocked and everything. And uh, yeah, it's it, it was a fine movie. The twists did not go the way I wanted them to. Mm-hmm. Um, but enjoyable overall. I, I, it's not a, a detriment to the film that it didn't play out exactly as I wanted. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest disappointment thing, uh, the d- disappointing thing about it was in the end when you find out that he is actually, you find out that he's really trying to find two Nazis and he's one of the Nazis that he's trying to find. Mm-hmm. And him and the other Nazi that he does find pretended to be Jewish immigrants after Auschwitz to kind of save themselves. Uh, I really wish that it just kind of stayed truthful to what it was telling you. I feel like that would have been more impactful. Yeah. Um, Because once you find out he was an uh, Auschwitz guard, you're just like, oh, I don't care about you anymore. Yeah, you you lose all, like, hope for him. You're like, okay, well, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Like, regardless of how much we liked him throughout this movie, believe it or not, him being a Nazi is not very forgivable. Yeah. Uh, and especially he went the then they went the coward's way out and were like oh, we need to save ourselves. Uh, it also was like okay that's a, it went it went, it was a big drop. You're like ah, okay yeah I I think it it probably would have been more interesting to me. I know this couldn't be done because the tattoo would not have been as faint if this happened. But if Martin Landau somehow tattooed him himself and persuaded him like kind of kind of incepted him making him believe that he was this jewish man in auschwitz i feel like that would have been better again a little more out there but it would have been more interesting and more uh you know yeah interesting surprising (laughs) yeah more interesting more interesting um but that being said like it's a fine movie i think uh one thing i i kind of got tired of they kept doing the whole uh tension because the guns in the bag kind of thing mm-hmm um, that got old. I'm like, okay, we get it. He's walking around with a gun in his bag, and he might sometimes forget that it's there. And he's got a permit for it too, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I guess most places like you probably can't carry, but yeah, unless you're doing something illegal, most places are not gonna. Most people are not gonna ask you for a permit. Yeah. Um. So like they they had all this tension for just. Basically, it's something yeah. that he's not doing wrong. Like the security guard of a store has no right to ask someone for a, a permit yeah. for, for a concealed weapon. Um, so um, the only person, funnily enough, that legally could have asked him if he had a permit for the weapon is Dean Norris's character, who mm-hmm. he shoots with the gun. Because <laughs> so, yeah. uh, he's also a, a, a police officer. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 enough. It's a fine movie. Uh 
I probably, pardon the pun, won't remember it. Uh, <laughs> I like I like the end when he's like, I do remember, and then shoots himself. It's like, oh yeah, that is the most roll credits moment I've ever seen in my yeah, life. Yeah, but now I they remember. But instead, they cut to Martin Landau explaining exactly what we already found yeah. out. So I kind of wish they cut. It would have been more impactful if they cut that part out too. Um, I was really hoping for that, and then they brought him, and then like the whole elderly. I'm like, oh, okay. yeah. But I, more than anything, I just really wish that it was just truthful and there was no twist because that was a lot more interesting than what it was. Yeah. A, a an Auschwitz survivor trying to hunt down a Nazi guard. That simple, and very intriguing in my mind. You know, it's mm-hmm. a, a good revenge movie. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't have too much to say about it. Christopher Plummer's great. Uh, Martin Landau's great. <laughs> There's a tagline for this film. Said it, uh, it says it's never too late for revenge. That's that's the tagline. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> dark truths will come to light, and it's never too late for revenge. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thought hard for that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's that's really a, all I've got to say oh, about shit. it. Ooh. Bruno Gans is Rudy Car- Curlander number one. What? Mm-hmm. Hold on. Let me let me see if that's true. That's that's in the trivia, and I don't. Well, I did not recognize him. They put a lot of makeup on him. Bruno Gans played Hitler in uh, uh, the movie Downfall. Um, he's a, he's a very famous German actor, or was he's passed away, and he's he's Swiss, not German. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I recognized him, but forgot to look up who he was. So Bruno Gans is also in this movie. A little fun fact: is that the is that the guy who like? There's a meme for that, and like they're in like a. Uh, like a fallout shelter or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's from the movie Downfall. Yeah. Uh, and Did Bruno. you ever see those memes? Yeah. Like, they're just yeah. talking. That's Did so you funny. see the one with, uh, going off the topic here, uh, Taika Waititi's new movie, uh, Jojo Rabbit, is about a boy whose imaginary friend is Hitler. No. But check out the trailer after after we wrap up here. Uh, but Taika Waititi himself is Maori, which is not Aryan, and mm-hmm. he's also Jewish. So... <laughs> So the, someone made one about Hitler finding out that a Maori Jewish man is playing him. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hilarious. I'll look it um, up, yeah. But yeah, that's that's Bruno Gans and Downfall. But yeah, uh, going back to Remember, it's a fine movie, but, you know, could have been a lot better if they made di- slightly different changes. Yeah. Did your father ever talk to you about Germany? Are you kidding me? No, he's a collector, right? What's that? I'm sorry, I... What's going on here? I will go sit down! You gotta answer some questions right now! Do you want to continue? I must finish. I must. Let's move on to 20th Century Women. We are at a turning point in our history. As you know, there is a growing disrespect for government. It is a crisis of confidence. We can see this crisis in the growing doubt about the meaning of our own lives and in the loss of a unity of purpose for our nation. We always believed that we were part of a great movement of humanity itself involved in the search for freedom. We've always believed that the days of our children would be better than our own. But we've discovered that owning things and consuming things does not satisfy our longing for meaning. Wow, he is so screwed. It's over for him. I thought that was beautiful. 
20th Century Women, the story of a teenage boy, his mother, and two other women who helped raise him among the love and freedom of South California in 1979. Uh, directed by uh, Mike Millis, written by Mike Millis, stars Annette Benning, Ella, or um, I always say Ella Fanning. It just hits me. Also, I'm pretty time. sure it's Mills, not Millis. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's definitely not an eye there, Glenn. Good job. <laughs> Reading 101. Uh, Greta Gerwig and what's that? Billy Cutup. Uh, Cutup. Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I'm so fat. My eyes are like in the future reading so fast. And Lucas Jade Zuman. Zuman. Yeah. So uh, 20th century women. Yeah. Uh, this was actually the second time I had seen this. Um, and so Really? Yeah, you yeah. Did, I don't think it said it in your letterbox. Did, oh, really? And you didn't yeah. say it last time either. I did. I said it while you were reading the synopsis. So I don't think you heard me. Um, it's probably because I have a hard time reading. Yeah, I, I really liked it the first time. The second time, I kind of noticed more of the flaws. Yeah. Um, not that it, that made it bad, but it, it was just kind of... That's what happens with every movie. You really do Yeah. It, you either see more flaws or more detail. Um, and with this... Yeah, I just kind of found myself slightly annoyed. Not enough to not enjoy it, but I don't remember disliking the female characters in this as much as I did the first time. Not mm-hmm. that I hated them, but I was just like, you guys are all so dumb right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was a it's a it's a good movie. Is this what this review site is coming to? Yes, yes, it is. So yeah, it's always very difficult to talk about just okay movies or good movies because there's there's not much juice to talk about. Yeah. Um, I I like the cast. Uh, everybody from Annette Bening to again pretty much the main cast. Elle Fanning. It's really hard to watch her and not think of Neon Demon. Yeah. Yeah. And especially in this movie where she's just like kind of phased out the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then. So, like, the last movie we watched, uh, I already forget the name of it. <laughs> the Vanishing of Sydney Hall. Yeah, like, she was great in that. Like, she, there was, like, emotion and stuff. And this one, she kind of, like, spaces out. And, so I'm like, oh, she's going to eat people or something. Or no, the other way around. Her. People are going to eat her. Gonna eat her. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I liked all the all the women. I really liked uh, Billy Crudup. Oh, yeah. Every, was... Everybody, in a sense, was relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to pull some shit. Uh, and what's the what's the huge topic here? What we're talking about? It's the feminism, right? Yeah. Feminism. Feminism, a lot of feminism and, going on, and it's awesome. And a older woman's struggle Fuck, with understanding, well, <laughs> uh, while ultimately liking the idea of feminism, struggling with what it might mean. Mm-hmm. Um, most notably when. Greta Gerwig is talking about menstruation and oh, uh, that was during the dinner. Scene. Yeah, yeah. Billy, especially when Billy Crudup chimed in. <laughs> yeah. it's like you can't just have sex with the vagina. You have to have sex with the whole woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Billy Crudup, he's great. Um, I, when I realized it was him, I was like, "Yes, nice, yeah, sweet, yeah." Doctor Manhattan, how you doing? Now, what did, what did you think of the the uh, scenes in this where they kind of did like a, I kind of I call them PowerPoint movies, um, where they show clips of other things mm-hmm. and kind of turn into a documentary for like a solid two minutes and then go back to the story. Um, I feel like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I it did not really work for me in this. I kind of wish they just stuck to the story, but I yeah, want to see what you thought. I don't think so either. Um. Mainly because you're going just through five people that are different people's lives and then they kind of just PowerPoint it instead of just going through it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't think it really worked to you either. Uh, yeah. Maybe there's some other way they could have done it. But yeah, like like uh, kind of people who do that well are Quentin Tarantino and Spike Jones or mm-hmm. no, not Spike Jones, Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Um, and uh, I, I feel like. This was trying to do that, but also be super indie and like 
sentimental and everything and it just yeah. didn't work for me uh i felt like there was too much music throughout this entire movie i, I don't think it this is just stuff i noticed the second viewing it, it felt like it didn't trust itself to be emotional with just what was happening mm-hmm. and i i just felt like i remember just hearing so much score underneath everything that was happening and can't even remember moments of silence I might be nitpicking. I mean, no, that. now that I think of it, I also am realizing that, too. Yeah. Um, but if, overall, like, uh, I don't want to knock this movie too much. It's a solid movie. Uh, I, I think it has a good mother-son dynamic, uh, you know, with a single mother trying to raise a son mm-hmm. whose father essentially abandoned him um, and, and raise him well to equally be... A man in in uh you know the loosest sense of the words and also yeah. respect women but also not be overbearing. And it's man, a- did he respect women in this movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. man, did he respect women? <laughs> but it's it's well in a way he didn't though because he re- he he wouldn't just accept L Fanning yeah. saying no. So it was kind of like he was. Having the facade of respecting women, yeah, he, but not internally yeah, he had, respecting them. He had them. the thought of women in his mind and respecting them, but like when it came down to like with him and Al Fanning, like it didn't yeah. translate well. I feel like there wasn't enough repercussion for that. Um, yeah. There wasn't like a lesson for him there. At least not one that I can remember, and I, <laughs> I kind of feel like that was a little. Uh, My favorite part, dude, is when he was in the hotel bathroom and he comes out and. Elle Fanning's just sitting there in her underwear, and he's like, I, uh, love you. I'm like, oh, baby, what you doing? What, what is you doing? What is you doing? <laughs> I was just, oh, man. Uh, he's feel, it's, there's moments, like, there's there's moments in this movie where you cringe. Like, yeah. That was the biggest one for me. I'm like, oh, yeah. you're going to get hit so hard. But the, the thing I thought was the most interesting part, I don't feel like they uh, focused on it too enough, which was um, with uh, the mother-son dynamic. That was the most intriguing part to me. And yeah. it felt like, granted, like uh, Annette Benning's character is doing, it felt like it was trying to avoid it. Mm-hmm. Um and not that she was, but she was just trying to do what she thought was right, which in turn made it feel like he made him feel like she was avoiding him. Yeah. So maybe that's what was supposed to happen. But it, I I really wish it focused more on how they felt about that. And I don't feel like there were strong enough emotions to justify. No. Um, that, but I mean, but overall, I really did enjoy the movie. It, yeah, same. It's got its its solid moments, especially the cringe moments that make you feel relatable to the characters and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't. I don't honestly have too much to say. Uh, yeah. Jesus, this review site, man. <laughs> <laughs> I will also say I wasn't fully a hundred, like giving it a hundred percent watching this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, you got other I, things. I, I, yeah, I was. I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. What? Thinking that you know everything that's going on. No, I don't. I just think that, you know, having your heart broken is a tremendous way to learn about the world. I see the shapes. I remember thumbnails. I see the short. This is the really hard part, and then it gets better. And then it gets hard again. (laughs) Do you think you're happy? Seriously? Look, wondering if you're happy, it's a great shortcut to just being depressed. Well, uh, yeah, I got nothing else to say, so let's move on to the judgment. So, remember... uh, I'm just gonna say... No, it's, it's a fine movie, but it's nothing worth putting on a shelf and making a shelf boy for wow that's actually kind of sad oh yeah uh because at one point in my life like i thought about what i was gonna review this movie and i really I thought about it i'm like wow and then i forgot and now i remember and it's not gonna be a shelf boy 
I don't even know what you were starting, uh, where, where you go with that. I'm just trying to make the time longer than 25 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the trailers and stuff, it will be. Yeah. So, remember, it does not make it onto the shelf. What about 20th century women, Glenn? I don't know why I struggled saying that uh, so much. Because you're turning into me when you're reading your own mind. Um, Apparently. Just, uh, I thought this was a very impactful movie, especially for the, the whole topic of feminism and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I really liked the characters. Uh, I liked most of the acting. I thought it was great. But, however, I wasn't interested enough in it, like f- fully interested enough to actually sit down and care. Um, it had its cringeworthy moments, which was super r- relatable, but I still don't feel like it had the juice there mm-hmm. to give it a shelf boy. Yeah. Uh, if if I had, if you had asked me before I rewatched it, I would say it's definitely going to be a shelf boy. Mm-hmm. Um, but rewatching it a second time, in, in a way, when we do these movies that we've already seen, rewatching it a second time is often more beneficial to whether or not it deserves to be a shelf boy yeah because it it gives a rewatchability uh idea into it and while i still enjoyed watching this a second time it did not hold up as well as i thought it would have um and and i i found myself just a little bit more disappointed um, cause I really loved this movie the first I was, time I, I was watched about to it. Say, now this isn't us like saying like, don't go watch it. Yeah, you should every, definitely every watch review it. site has like a four or five stars or whatever rating system they have. It's like, yeah. it's really up there. So like, I recommend anybody seeing it. Yeah. I just don't think it has the potential for our shelf boys. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our shelf boys are kind of like a, would I spend money on a, yeah. Would I actually just want to go sit down and watch that off the shelf? Yeah, yeah. So it's not going to be a shelf boy for me. So, with that being said, remember, and 20th century women do not make it onto the shelf. And we have a slight notice for you. Mm. We will be taking a an extended hiatus. Uh, it's not to say we're never coming back, uh, but uh, I, I don't even know what, what's what's going on, Glenn. Uh, I think we just have a lot, both of us, going on. Uh, yeah, me more than you. Well, that's not really. You have a lot of work. I've got a lot of life stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be taking a little bit of a break. Uh, I don't know exactly how long. Could be a month. Could be longer. Maybe even shorter. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but uh, without going into too much detail, unfortunately, we will be taking a slight break. Yeah. So with that in mind, we do not have movies uh, for next week. We will let you know. Probably do like a quick five minute, maybe 10 minute catch up. Once and we this do, could be beneficial for us. We could come back super reju- rejuvenated and not just sitting here saying, oh, the movie's good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We might have a n- more hour-long episodes again. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, like, I, I'm getting uh, kind of – I'm not fatigued of going seeing movies. Uh, like, lately I haven't been going to see just movies in the theaters, and I want to change that. I want to I want to be able to come out spry, hippity hop, and yeah. go in with my unlimited regal plan. <laughs> <God, see it. laughs> but yeah, uh, so but anyway, yeah. With that being said, we will let you know when we have another episode coming up, and uh, you can either wait for that brief announcement podcast to let uh, let you know what the next movies are or uh, follow us on Instagram Keystone underscore film underscore review on Facebook we are Keystone Film Review and on Letterboxd I am Mike KFR and I am Glenn KFR and that will do it for a while and till <laughs> next time <laughs> goodbye bye bye